Hey you traders, welcome back. Shane from GMT Futures and FX. In a previous video, I think it was one of the uh, early ones we just did, uh, we spoke about market direction and uh, establishing the trend for the day. And one of the things I'm going to talk about today is pyramiding and how we can utilize a strong move on the market we're trading. It doesn't really matter what chart we're trading, whether it's a Renko based chart, tick, uh, range based. Uh, time-based chart it doesn't really matter as long as you've got the established trend for the day and you can identify momentum within that trend then there's the ability to potentially pyramid into the trade so one of the things that we find with our new traders and traders generally is that uh, this pyramiding concept is a little bit confusing to some traders and and they tend to use it in the wrong wrong way and what I want to do is take you through a way in which you should potentially be using pyramiding and a way to minimize risk and maximize reward because ultimately that's what we want isn't it we want to be able to capitalize on those larger moves and to do that with minimal risk uh, within our trading so uh, let's have a look at our setup here as far as the market dynamics and what's happening so we'll go back a couple of days here and we see saw that uh, earlier we had an established uh, run up then we've uh, got a high and low established and then we had price trade lower below the VWAP and the 200 period moving average so our 200 period moving average is this cyan uh, line and then our VWAP is our is our blue line here our darker blue line and you see that we've got our price bars or our actual Renko bars trading below that VWAP and you can see there's a couple of times where we uh, push back and hit that resistance levels which I've marked on the chart so this is our bearish market then we get a, a bit of a, a sustained run up from this support level here we get to be a bit bullish because we cross both the VWAP and the 200 period moving average and then uh, that pushes up it doesn't go anywhere because we don't have uh, we don't have that uh, the volume to to go with that move you can see that we've got divergence in price from our uh, MACD our GMT BB MACD and also the RSI confirms that they were overbought and we have uh, we have divergence there as well so that's the catalyst for our counter move and we get that initial bearish run down we close back below the uh, time period moving average then we get that spike back up now this is where we're looking for our initial trade so our initial trade sets up here on a close back below the 200 period moving average because we've got a initial run down we have a retracement testing retesting that uh, V weapon uh, resistance level and that holds and that pushes us back down to get our first trade so that would be if we're looking at our lot sizing that would be trade number one so we'll just mark that as trade one and that would be one lot so our risk on this trade here if we're going into the trade so risk is around two hundred and twenty dollars. So it's the we're entering on a, on the low of that, uh, or the we're entering the close of that uh, that price bar, and our stop is going to be two points above the uh, the high of that candle or that wick. So if we have a look here, you'll see that there's our high at uh, fifty fifty seven. So we're going to put that at fifty fifty nine. That would be our stop on that particular trade. So that's roughly around. Uh, 22 points or 220 dollars so that would be our initial risk 220 dollars so we'll just put that on the chart risk of 220 so that would be a, that would be our if, if that were to go against us and we were to get stopped that we would have a negative 1r which be would, which would be negative 220 now you can see there that that trade actually doesn't stop out uh, it actually starts kind of moving in the right direction pretty much straight away if I'm going to pyramid I'm going to add in positions when I see this resistance these dynamic resistance levels set up so I'm going to use my 200 period moving average as my trailing stop in this example and you can see there that we're in the trade and we're looking for a close above that 200 period which happens down here but what I want to show you is pyramiding and how we would do it I want to show you the pyramid example so what generally happens with traders is they'll they'll take two lots here so their risk will be uh, negative uh, 440 so they're risking they're taking a full two lot risk here and then they'll take profit say for example at their at a at a designated point in the market so for example it might be that they have a 60 point target here for trade one so let's see how this works out let's let's well, we'll say 50 points because it gets there quite easily so we'll say that trader one is taking $220 worth of risk and at tr trade one they're going to basically 
uh, take profit off at at 50 uh, 49.83 so there's uh, uh, lot one is going to be plus 50 points or so $500 sorry 50 points of $500 and then lot two is trailing because they've got two lots so they're trailing that down now they're not necessarily adding more lots they're just starting with uh, two lots this is what typically happens and let's see how that compares to uh, my scenario of, of uh, pyramiding into a winning trade so uh, this is trader one and we'll just keep a tally here trader one and let's so they're going to use the 200 period moving average and then they're going to use the swing high as the uh, exit point for their trade so they're basically going to get taken out just down here and we'll there's our stop there that breaks this high there which is 49.17 so 49.19 uh, breaks by two so that would mean that they got in here and we'll just there's our trade entry and we'll just work out how many points that is just do a quick tally here and they end up with 114 points so we'll just lot two lot two is 114 which is a pretty good day at the office like that that's a great result so it's uh, $1,140 uh, so a total of 16 so it's a total of 1680 because that first uh, that second lot trade was about 1180 rather than 1140 so we'll just adjust that accordingly so our total profit there uh, 1680 for trader one uh, trading with two lots the first lot at uh, 500 and the second lot at 1180 and the overall risk for that uh, trader one was 440 dollars on the initial trade entry right trader so just to recap trader one starts with a risk of 440 he takes his first profit here with plus 50 points which is 500 dollars and the second trade uh, goes out out and gets exited above that swing high there and that nets out or 11 8 so trader trader one does pretty well although his risk is a lot higher he actually locks in profit early and in, for all intensive purposes it looks like a really good trade but let's have a look at the value of pyramiding into the trade and the value that the reward to risk comes or provides with pyramiding so trader one starts with a risk of 440 trader two however takes his first trade at exactly the same point so this is trade number one as far as our trade cycle now trader one is taking two lots trader two is only taking one lot because remember he's pyramiding his lots in so trader one has an initial risk of two hundred and twenty dollars so his risk profile is negative 220 now with with trader two trader two has a risk of 220 dollars with one lot he doesn't take profit here though what he does is as soon as he gets another trade opportunity for an entry which actually occurs here uh, which is at 1429 and there's the entry there short at 4997 trader one moves his stop or trader two moves his stop to uh, two points above that uh, that price there at 5018 and that means that he caps his risk on his first trade so what effect or she what effectively he or she does is basically cuts their risk down by uh, putting their stop at that level for the first lot and the second lot obviously they've got an open trade risk with a with a risk there if price pushes back and trades against them but obviously it doesn't so we're in on one lot here and we're our second lot is added here at 1413 and then what happens obviously that trade goes really well we get a second opportunity or third opportunity to add a position in so remember we're pyramiding we're looking for opportunities to add trades to this winning trade now what happens here is we get our setup price pushes to uh, the 50 period moving average we get our dynamic resistance which is our catalyst for a trade entry and our our pivot turn bar occurs our red pivot turn bar the close of that bar allows us to add another position so now we've effectively got three lots in the market we have one lot here uh, starting at 10 13 our second lot went in there at 14 13 and our third lot goes in at uh, 6 49 the next morning so what that means is that neither of these two trades have any risk in them anymore this trade obviously does because it's an open trade it's got open risk but we've moved our stops to trail just above this 
swing high here, two ticks above the swing high. So uh, that's where our stop is. So we're, we've got three lots in the market. We don't get a chance to add another lot because we don't get that dynamic resistance, but we do get taken out on a break of that 50-period uh, moving average, a close above, and that occurs there. So all trades are out. So we have all lots are exited. We don't make much money on that third trade. It's plus seven points, so $70. Uh, the lot number two was $710, and lot number one was uh, $1,180. So overall, our profit is $1,950. So we do do a lot better than trader number one. So, But the key thing here for us to look at is that by us scaling into this trade, we actually made more profit than trader one, because remember, trader one had an overall profit of uh, 11 or 1680 so it's so we actually make 270 dollars more profit but that's not the big thing like you would probably think well uh, you know plus 270 is not something really significant as far as the two examples but what the biggest example is here is that we're not taking anywhere near as much risk as trader number one and we've got the potential to make more money so we're actually taking, if you look at our reward to risk, our reward to risk for trader one is 3.81. Our reward to risk for trader number two is 8.1. So you can see which one has got a statistically better better edge in the market. We have a huge edge in the market in relation to trader two because we're pyramiding in. We've got the potential to make a lot more money and we're not capping our potential profit on those bigger moves. We're actually allowing ourselves to, to make more money and, and run with the trend. So as far as pyramiding goes, that's a great way to uh, uh, to look at improving your overall edge in the market and, and improving your profit and your reward to risk. There are a couple of things we need to be careful of. Uh, obviously, when we start pyramiding, I'm going to take you through that, particularly with our automation. So I'll take you through that uh, in the next video. But uh, that was a very quick look at uh, pyramiding into the trade and, and making sure that you add positions to a winning trade rather than than scaling down or adding to a losing position and we'll talk more about that in our in our other videos but uh, thank you for your time have a fantastic day and I look forward to catching you on the next video update cheers